Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2022 Volkswagen Atlas. It has the V6 engine in it and we're going to be doing an oil change on it today. Uh, the fluid we'll be using, uh, it requires uh, 5.8 quarts. So you're going to want to have 6 quarts and uh, we're running the AMS oil. Uh, AEL is the stock number on it and uh, it meets and exceeds the specifications for Volkswagen 504.00 which is what this engine calls for and this is a 5W30 oil. Um, I have a, uh, also have a fluidcapacity.com website that will give you all the information on the fluids that Amsoil recommends for each cavity. Fluidcapacity.com website and when you get to this home page we've got the auto and light truck fluid lookup guide. We'll click on that and uh, we type in over here the vehicle year so we're on a 2022 and we hit the build list tab and we'll scroll down to Volkswagen and we've got an Atlas with a 3.6 liter and over here on the right side we have it's printable right here's a print button it gives you all the lubricants and fluids that Anzo recommends for each cavity so in this engine uh, what we're using is the AEL QT and uh, if you click on that it's highlighted it'll take you to Amsoil's website for pricing and uh, more information on it and uh, if you go down here further it gives you automatic tranny fluid it recommends uh, differentials uh, if there's any filters recommended they'll be listed uh, here's the capacities engine 5.8 quarts cooling system automatic tranny and the total fill on that uh, automatic tranny differential transfer case and uh, down here it gives you torque specs for like your old drain plug and um, but again this is a printable uh, thing to be able to find all the information that you need for maintenance uh, without having to try and find it in your owner's manual also we have uh, a filter here is a CarQuest uh, 84462 and it's a cartridge type filter and there's also a seal for the cap the plastic cap that holds it in so I'm going to show you the, uh, the procedure for changing this oil. There's a, a plastic uh, cover underneath the whole engine compartment and transaxle area up in front. So I'm going to show you getting that down so we can get at the oil drain and also the oil filter. So we'll get started with that. Okay, here we are coming under the uh, vehicle. And here's that plastic pan that has to come off. It's pretty good sized. And there's, I believe, 14 bolts or screws we have to take out. And uh, these here are, uh, right here, there's one, two, three on each side, kind of in front of where the tire's at, kind of beside it, I guess you'd say. Those are T25. And then, uh, I didn't mention, this is the first oil change on this vehicle. It's only got 8,800 miles on it. And there's one right here in the center. And if you look at that one, it's actually from the factory. They didn't get it put in all the way unless somebody's had this off before, but you can see it's not in all the way. But that screw right there, uh, it's part of that plastic. It goes up into this plastic piece. And then we go on the passenger side, and we've got three more. One here, uh, one right there, and one a little further back right there, and those are T25s. Okay, and then across the middle, kind of right at the center where the axle's at, there's a T45 here, a T45 right there, and a T45 right there and then we go to the back and there are you can see the catalytic converters there there's one there's actually two on each side one right here and one over here and the same on the opposite side so there's two more over there back towards those, those uh, catalytic converters that take off Okay, so those are the screws that you can have to take off. Total of, I believe, 14 of them. And then we can drop down this plastic uh, piece here and get to the filter and also the drain plug. Okay, I'm going to take out this screw here that was uh, loose from the factory, looks like. Get that out of the way first. It's kind of in a bad spot there to get a ratchet in. And then, if you look across here, there's, uh, there's actually uh, a tab that goes above and then one below. And then there's another tab right here. It goes above this plastic piece, and one here that goes is below. And it does that all the way across. So when you go back together, you're going to have to get it back together with that same pattern. I'll show it to you when I get it down.
ready. Okay, right here's your drain plug. It's an 18 millimeter. Okay, I've got another drain pan here. Right here is your oil filter. In the center is a, a silver hex uh, Allen, Allen head. It's a six millimeter. If you want to take that out to drain out the filter, you sure could. Um, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm just going to take the whole filter off. And that's a 36 millimeter socket to take off that filter. Okay. See how much oil is going to come at us here. And pull that off, and now we just have the cap. So here's an O-ring here we're going to replace with a new one that comes with the filter. Okay, this is a filter cap, and you can see we've got some uh, some of the break-in. This this is the uh, first oil change, so we've only got about 8,800 miles on it. So there's break-in process going on, but you can see there's a little bit of a little bit of metal in there, kind of flaky stuff, and you can kind of see it down in here too. So when you get that off, you want to clean it out, and you can use a brake clean solvent. I've got uh, some ether I'm going to use, and uh, just spray that down and get that garbage out of there. And if you use ether, make sure you don't have any sparks around or you're going to have fire. And I can still see a few in there, so I'm going to hit it again, and I'm going to blow it out. And then uh, this, this O-ring here can come off. We'll take that off, and then uh, I'm going to finish cleaning this up, and I'll show putting a new O-ring on. But you can still see some metal floating around in there. Some sparklies. I'm going to try and get as much of that out as I can. That's a lot better. Okay, we've got the new O-ring right here. And uh, before we put that on, I'm going to grease it up real well. And the other thing I'm going to point out, um, make sure you get this O-ring in this groove right here at the end of my O-ring pick. It's easy to get it in right here, and what that'll do is it'll cut the O-ring. Okay, so this groove right here is what you want. It'd be nice if they had two O-rings in. I know GM does that on some of theirs because it gives you a, a double, kind of a double seal if one of them gets nicked. But on this one, there's only one. So I'm going to grab some grease here, and I'm going to grease up that uh, O-ring so it goes in nice. And we'll just slip it over. And like I said, it's easy to get it in that wrong groove. Very easy. Okay, you gotta make sure you get it down into that bottom groove. Just like that right there. Get some of that grease out of there. Put it on the O-ring. There we go. Now the O-ring's all greased up. It'll go in nice and it's in the groove like it needs to be. Next thing is the filter. There's an O-ring here at the top of the filter. You can put a little bit of remnant grease that you have on your fingers on top of that. And then it just snaps in, just like that. Okay, so that filter's ready to go back in. Ready. Okay, you're ready to put that filter in. And again, that's a 36 millimeter. I'm gonna crank it in by hand as tight as I can get it. And this gets 25 newton meters of torque, which is 220 inch pounds. So either or, 25 newton meters or 220 inch pounds. 
That's it. Okay. Next thing we're going to put in is the drain plug. Drain plug gets 22 foot pounds of torque. Which is 264 inch pounds. So we'll set that up. So 22 foot pounds on this. There it is. Okay. So clean this all up, clean up any residual oil. And uh, next thing we're going to do is fill it up with oil. Okay, right here on the uh, front of the engine is the oil fill. Take that off, and they got kind of a baffle in there, so you have to have a smaller snout on your uh, on your funnel. Okay, and then we can put the oil in. So again, 5.8 quarts is what this holds. So you're going to need six on hand. So we're using that AMSO European Motor Oil 5W30. Meets and exceeds all the specs for it. If any of you want to uh, to purchase the AMSO, get a hold of me. I can set up a wholesale account. It'll save you 20% off the retail price. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up, and uh, then we're going to start it up and check for leaks. Okay, we got the six quarts or 5.8 quarts in, and we're going to take out that funnel, clean up that edge there, and we're going to put our cap back on. Because if you start the engine with this cap off, it's going to be throwing oil out of here because it's an overhead cam engine. Okay, so next thing is we're going to start it and I'll be underneath looking for leaks. Okay, we're underneath here. Um, we're getting ready to start it up. Um, I'm going to check it here. I'm going to run it here and see if I get any leaks. The biggest thing you want to watch for is if you get any leaks around this uh, cap, that would mean you would nick the uh, O-ring. So that's one thing you want to watch. And then uh, we got the drain plug in and tight. We'll check that also. Um, the other thing I'm going to do before I put that cover on, I'm going to take it for a drive just to verify and make sure that I have no leak on that O-ring. Um, it's just a, you know, a safety check because there's only one O-ring on there. And if you nick it, it's going to slowly leak out. So um, just want to verify before you put that cover on that uh, everything is sealed up. So we'll go ahead and start this up and then uh, we're going to go for a drive and then we'll be back to put the cover on. Okay, here's the cover. And right here where my foot is, that's the center rear of the cover. And then as we go up to the front here, you can see these tabs sticking out. And the way these tabs work is one goes underneath. You can see how they're, they're kind of flared a little bit from the side. One's flared up, one's flared down. It's kind of a zigzag pattern back and forth. Okay, so that kind of tells you how that uh, goes in. So one will go under, one will go over. This one here has got a catch on it. That one goes over top. This one here goes under. Okay, so as you put that up there, you need to get the, all those zigzags in where they go, and then you can start putting the bolts in. And right here is where that center bolt goes that was loose that I initially took out. So don't forget that one. But I wanted to show you that before I start putting it up. Okay, I've got all these tabs in. Like I say, here's the upper one, here's the lower one, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper. So you want to have them all kind of positioned and then you can push in from the back and just kind of take a quick look before you get too far in. And I got one that's out of place right there. Okay. I think right there we are good. And there it goes. Slips right in. Next thing I'll do is put on some of the larger bolts. Those uh, T45s. Put those in and uh, those have some residual Loctite on and they're a fair size bolt. Okay, the rest of the ones that go in are the T25s, 
And uh, this little guy right up here is going to be a tough one to get at. You might be able to get a quarter inch drive ratchet in there and tighten it up. Um, my guess is if your vehicle's been through a quick lube, they probably won't even put it back in. <laughs> so we're going to put the rest of these on and, uh, and then that'll be it for this bottom cover. We tighten up all the remainder of these T25 uh, Torx head screws. You don't want to get too crazy with them. Just snug them down by hand. I just use a little quarter inch drive ratchet. They don't have to be terribly tight, just enough so that they don't come out. Because if you go too crazy on it, you're going to start busting the plastic up above here. It's holding the steel clip that it threads into. So. Okay, we've run it for about four or five miles. Got it all up the temp. And check the oil level here. And okay, we're about halfway up the cross hatch marks right there. About the end of my thumbnail. And I put in the full six quarts. So it called for 5.8, but uh, you know, we still got a little bit of room there, so it looks like we're good. Okay, we're gonna reset the oil change uh, interval light. And uh, this here is the owner's manual. And you want to turn to page 27 where it talks about the service menu. And then uh, page 28, right up here, resetting the oil change service, okay? So what we're gonna do is, with, uh, without starting the vehicle, we're gonna push the start button, bring up the dash, okay? And we got uh, an okay button in the middle, and then we have um, kind of the menu left and right. So right there is assist systems, and audio, there's telephone, click it again, we get vehicle status, and driving data. Okay, so I believe it's under driving data, and uh, hit the OK button, let's see what we got here. Okay, there's an up and down arrow right here. Okay, and this will take us, we want to go to range, right there's range, and then hold that OK button for about four or five seconds. And didn't work that time. Let's try it again. There it is. Okay. This here will pop up. It's got service. And then we're going to arrow down to reset oil change service. And we'll hit OK. And we're going to hit that OK again. And there it is. Service interval is reset. So that's it. I used a total of six quarts of oil for this oil change. Um, again, this vehicle's got about 9,000 miles on it. And uh, if anybody's interested in the AMSOIL, give me a call um, or email me, and I'd be happy to set you up an account to buy the AMSOIL. So we'll change this oil about every probably 10,000 miles. So I want to thank you for watching my video. Have a great day.